Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be installing an amplifier and subwoofer in this 2020 Toyota Corolla. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to integrate this amp and sub to the existing factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Now, one quick thing to note, our Corolla does not have JBL. It doesn't have the JBL sound system. If you did have JBL, we'll make those notes specifically down in the description of the video. All right, so at, here at the bench, the parts that we're going with for our install here today, first and foremost is our amp and sub combo that we've chosen to go with. Customer wants us to install this JL 500 watt amplifier. It's the JL 501D. There's 500 watts at two ohms, and the subwoofer we're matching to it is this Scar Audio 10 inch. Uh, it's about a 500 watt SDR series sub. Now the wiring kit is this amplifier wiring kit by New Concepts. We need some sort of line out converter because our factory radio won't have any sort of RCA outputs for a sub. And we're going with this Pack Audio LP7-2. Not only provides us an output for um, an RCA for our signal, but also generates a remote turn on for us so it can turn on our amplifier for us. So at this point of time, what we need to do is start planning a wire route from the battery area up underneath the hood into the cab in the vehicle. We have chosen to mount this amplifier underneath the driver's side front seat. We've already created a mount out of ABS plastic to mount the amplifier, and we've kind of started to cut that and mold it into shape. Now, up underneath the hood, the battery is here on the driver's side towards the firewall. There are two grommets in the firewall, kind of one more driver's side center here, and there's actually one very far to the left-hand side. Those are generally the locations where we're going to want to pass our power wire through. Now, we've already taken off the little cover that goes up and over the positive terminal posts and factory fuses. There's a nice little stud right here that we're going to actually connect our power wire to. We want our inline fuse as close to the battery as possible as it protects the run to the amp. All right, so we're preparing now at this point of time to go ahead and pull our power wire through the firewall. It's easy for us to start from the cabin and push our fish through the grommet into the engine bay where it's coming out. You can see that our factory grommet in here is right there. And we pushed uh, our notorious wire hanger through. And what we're gonna do is pull our power wire from the cabin into the engine bay because it's a lot easier to go from that direction. Now here inside the car is our power wire. And what we've done is we've actually taped it to that hanger here really well. And we're gonna do ourselves a favor here. Heavily coat this wire and hanger with soap and water. We want this as slippery as possible. So as we pull it from the engine bay side, it'll slip through that grommet without any sort of damage or getting hung up and it'll pass through really easily. Where that passes through the grommet, we go up underneath here, right above the gas pedal is our factory wiring loom and it goes through. Now we didn't go right there in the center, went right up to the side of that grommet, still passing through the rubber, but we don't want to impact or damage that factory wiring in any way. Here's our wire hanger through that soft rubber, came out the other side, and we're going to use this axis to pull our wire through. So with that wire now pulled through the firewall up underneath here, we actually just routed it back behind the battery. It's a nice short run. We split loomed it here, working on making our fuse holder. It's gonna actually snag that battery um, bracket bolt there. We just got our heat shrink and uh, wire ferrule on for our fuse holder and it's gonna seal nicely. Got everything ready to go. All right, so with that wire all done, we mounted our fuse holder, we snagged that bolt. We just created a little mount out of ABS plastic left over from the amplifier mount. And uh, so that's nice and secured using that bracket there. For now, we're gonna keep it off until we make all our connections in the vehicle. So let's now turn our attention over to the cabin of the vehicle to start running wire from the inside of that grommet towards underneath the driver's side front seat.
All right, so here at the bench, we have finished preparing our amplifier mount here. As you can see, it kind of fits the shape of up underneath the seat. We've mounted using some zip ties, our RCAs and our remote terminal wire. We're gonna tap in for audio, actually behind the factory radio. On this side of the amplifier, we have our ground and speaker wire output that'll go to the trunk as well as our remote turn on that we've taped here. Now we've already put holes here, so we can also zip tie it, but we don't want to do that until we get our power wire in, which we'll do that here in just a moment. So this is about done here on the bench. Let's take it into the car to start making those connections up underneath the seat. All right, so we have our amplifier all in there. It's gonna fit that location great. Got all our cables zip tied there. Got a Provo B seat shrink on. Goes up into this little axis hole, which is great. Now, if you actually open this up here, there's gonna be some mounting locations, generally for the factory amplifier or for options that you may or may not have. Now, for us, that's a perfect location for a ground. What we did, and as you saw, is we cleaned up the paint really well with a wire brush, and then we found a, uh, a bolt that actually threads into that location. So we mounted that bolt there. It's nice and sturdy there, and it's a nice shorty ground for our amplifier, and this all folds away. So with all that now connected, we've got our RCAs up. We fed the RCAs and remote turn on wire. Since our carpet is up with their panels off, we just kind of fish it up underneath here. And that's where it comes out. That panel is just held in with two clips there on the side. And we pulled our wire out. We'll have extra, obviously, here. The remaining that we will need, we're going to have to fish up into the dash cavity or we're going to connect our line out converter to the factory radio lastly here for our speaker wire output that goes through here and then we went back since this panel is off tucked it underneath and fished it through the b pillar back here pop this off just like the same technique we used there in the front to run that wire through just fish it up underneath the seat and it comes out right there so we can go ahead and get our sub installed here in the trunk area All right, so we're back here in the car. Now we're gonna temporarily pop the radio out just to get access to the speaker wire output so we can tap in with our line out converter to feed signal to our amplifier. So let's go ahead and pull the factory radio. So there's gonna be a, a trim piece that just unsnapped up and around the radio, just like that. Next here, we're gonna pop this heating and air control panel out. We're just using my panel popping tool here. like that, pretty easy and straightforward. Unplug your hazard switch. Now that's a ton of space to work. You're gonna have four 10 millimeter bolts holding it in. We have a socket with an extension to help us reach those bolt locations. So with those four bolts removed, let's go ahead and just unsnap the radio. There we are. Now you're gonna have just plenty of length to get in here. And the nice thing is there's a four pin harness here that has all four of your speaker wires, this guy. Now the benefit of this, if you want, I have a T harness or a little extension harness that you can modify versus actually tapping into this plug. And we can link that in the description and it's actually color coded. You don't need to identify what color goes where. Um, it's aftermarket color code standard, which is awesome. And uh, now let's head to the bench and show you the lineup converter that we're using in our install. All right, so here back at the bench, let's talk about this lineup converter. Now the lineup converter is basically taking a high level input amplified signal, and it's gonna convert it into a low level output that our amplifier can read. Now in this specific kit, pack includes a harness that plugs into the other end. And essentially here it comes with pre-term ends with RCA cables but since we're doing a high level input we'll actually cut these off and treat these like speaker wires so with those ends cut off those are our speaker wire inputs starting on this harness here the left hand side or left speaker is going to be white with a white black the black indicates the negative wire 
Right speaker is going to be gray with a gray black. Black indicates the negative wire. Now these other ends here, the power circuit. So looking here, this device does come with a power and ground, and it comes with a blue wire and a brown wire. So yellow is going to be your constant 12 volts. As this has a smart monitoring feature, because as soon as it detects audio coming from the factory radio over the speaker wires, it's going to automatically turn on a circuit inside. And this is your output. So essentially, once the pack module sees audio, it's going to put 12 volts out from this wire. That's why you're going to hook into your amplifiers remote turn on input now this is obviously really short so that's why we're going to extend it using the wire included within our amplifier wiring kit lastly here is our brown which is generally considered an audio ground you have an engine whine or any sort of distortion in the speaker that's not natural there you can hook this up ground it and it helps eliminate that noise in most instances if you have good rcas and you have a really solid ground on your amplifier this guy won't be needed so we can just cut him flush all right so we're back here in the car and we want to show you how we've made our manual connections here now there are t harnesses on the on the market available today in case you don't want to cut or slice into your harness and we can link those in the description for those that don't these are the wire colors to install your line out converter with the powered circuit so on this first plug here because there's two it's a gray harness the gray wire here is you're going to be your constant 12 volt going to our yellow wire your white with a black stripe, commonly on Toyotas, is your ground. Now what we've done is we've just stripped back the wire slightly using some wire strippers. We uh, put a hole through the wire and then we threaded our wire through like threading a needle. And for our speaker wire, wire harnesses here, now your front lift positive is gonna be this violet white with your yellow stripe. And then the negative for the front left is your violet white with a black stripe. Right speaker positive is going to be violet white with a green stripe and negative for the right side is going to be your violet white with a blue stripe. So we spliced in there, we soldered on, we're going to go ahead and relume that harness here. We still got to put some on our ground, but at this point of time, those are our manual connections. We're going to loom everything back up and get them everything back in. All right, so we fished our wire up into the dash. We'll just need to zip tie it away. A bundle here, we're going to just tuck in the dash so it's up and out of the way. Remote turn on wire goes to the remote out of our line out converter. We went ahead, loomed everything, got everything back together looking like factory and plugged back in. And we hooked our RCAs into the line out converter. So really that's all we need to do here in the dash. And at this point in time, we need to get everything reassembled. All right, so with the amplifier fully connected, we went ahead and got everything all buttoned up here and you get it back on the battery we are done underneath the hood all right so with the amplifier in we just did a vacuum here we went ahead and set our gains with an smd dd1 so gains are all nice and set here crossovers are all set and it's looking really really nice so with that all done with the radio up here all reassembled here it's time to do a final test So that's about it for this install here today. Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you like any of the parts that we used in our install, we'll link them all down in the description of the video. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. And we will see you in the next video.